All right, everybody. Breaking news edition of Green with Envy. No Celtics game tonight, but that does not stop the news cycle, nor does that stop the mad scientist Brad Stevens locking in Drew Holiday on a four-year extension. We're going to break it all down for you coming up here on Green with Envy. You know the deal. Let's lock in. What up, what up, what up? Welcome into a breaking news edition here of Green with Envy. Drew Holiday, four-year, $135 million extension. Brad trying to keep the core together. This is your boy, Will Weir, checking in. How you doing? How you living? And riding shotgun, we got my best friend, co-host, and the coach of our podcast. And he's actually in his co his player coach gear as we speak <laughs> after a power outage shut down the green with mb men's basketball team tonight it's the one and only greg manakis what's good man what's good we're locked in like we just locked in drew holiday dude I'm, I'm pretty excited we were so to kind of set the scene for everybody we're warming up for our game for our men's league game and our buddy remy shout out remy who also grew up in massachusetts uh just comes he's like you see drew holiday sign this extension and I was like, get the fuck out of here. Like, what are you talking about, man? And he's like, no, like it literally just dropped. Um, and we saw we saw the numbers. We were kind of talking about whether or not this would be a good thing for the Celtics. We've had a, we've had about 90 minutes to think about this. Um, seeing the report from Woj here on the screen. I know you were listening to a little bit of Bobby Marks um, kind of breaking this down. So four years, $135 million. What that comes down to is about $33.5 million uh, average annual salary. But according to Keith Smith, uh, shout out Keith, he said that this is actually going to save uh, the Celtics about $9 million next year um, in terms of their salary cap. So yep. although there is a lot of money that we're committing to Drew Holiday in the short term, this definitely helps the team. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, so the way that it kind of worked out is that he's going to basically he had a, he was going to have an extension option at the end of the year. And he could have picked that up, and there was some likely bonuses built into that, which apparently, and this was from uh, Bobby Marks, broke this down, that all of those expected bonuses would have gone into his salary number. Uh, and so he would have been up around 39, just under 40 million, basically, next year. And so now he's going to drop that extension, and he gets the long-term security here with the four years, 135. And his salary for next season is going to drop down to 30 million. So at least for next year, it's going to give the Celtics some flexibility to stay away from being that second apron team going forward the year after that there's almost no avoiding it because jason tatum's super max is going to get done this summer that's going to kick in uh and you're just you know you already got chris Stapps on the books for that year you've got jalen under his super max and we'll get to what this means for Derek white and others here in just a minute but with holiday you now have him going from about 39 to 30 million next year then it will be in the following years about 32.5 30, just about 35 and then that final year is going to be at just a, about just under 37.5 or so. Option. Yes, I believe that's correct, actually. Yeah, last year's uh, a player. Yeah. So an expensive deal for the Celtics. But I, I mean, honestly, like I think I'm a little surprised that it's four years versus three years, given that I think Drew Holiday is 33 years old today, right? So, you know, and he's not too far away from being 30. He'll be 34 by the time the season starts next year. So I think. The, the four years for me is a little surprising. I think the money, especially when you factor in the Celtics being able to get it down to 30 million next year, I think it makes a lot of sense. And it, I think what it really shows is the value that this team has seen with Drew Holiday. Because if you look at it on the surface, you know, his, his numbers are down. We've talked about this all year, the sacrifice that every one of these Celtics players has made. And I've seen the discourse, you know, on Twitter a little bit, especially with some games against the Bucks recently of, you know, do the Bucks have buyer's remorse with, you know, going for Dame Lillard and trading it out for that offensive ceiling, but falling back on defense. And, you know, if they had to do it all over again, would they? Well, you know, it's, you know, it, they probably wouldn't do it, to be 100% honest. That's at least the way it looks right now. But with the Celtics, Celtics, it looks like the value of Drew Holiday is not just on the court, but off the court. And I know recently, I'm trying to remember what podcast it was, um, 
they were talking about actually it was the Ryan Rosillo podcast. He did an, ad, an interview with Adam Lefke, Lefke who's uh, one of the hosts of different shows on, on the TNT platform. And he talked about, you know, uh, his time spent with Jay Wright, who's been a U- team USA basketball assistant. And they ended up on the topic of, of Drew Holiday. And they were like, when you're making team USA, the first guy that always came up in the room was Drew Holiday because he was the glue guy. He was the guy that was going to set the tone. He was the guy that's going to come in and do the work and be the example. And that's what I think you're seeing, you know, reading into this other than just what we see night to night from Drew Holiday, likely to get his sixth all defensive, potentially get his sixth all defensive nod this season, is that behind the scenes, he's just as important as what you see on the court. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, with the the Bucks and the way that they're kind of thinking about it, just going from Bucks fans and other people in the Bucks podcast universe, like our guy Ty, who also uh, works for Blue Wire. I know that he tweeted out, I'm trying to find the tweet right now, but he tweeted out the other day that there's no way if if you could do the trade over again, that he would go for Dame. He right. said, rather have the identity that the Bucks had, because they had an identity with Drew Holiday. I don't know what their ceiling was. But right. with Dame, they don't really have an identity, right? And that's the thing that's really missing with this new Bucks team. Although the Bucks have played the Celtics well, you know, two uh, twenty-point victories over the Celtics is nothing to you know nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. But you know, with Giannis going out, who knows? So we'll talk about that in a second. I think with Drew, the big thing for me, man, like I'm not worried about the four years because we were definitely already like going to commit to two years of drew holiday right like the the extension year we you know after next year we probably still feel good about another year of drew holiday four years down the road we'll cross that bridge when we get there it's also a player option where if there's anybody that i don't think is in, in the world anybody in the nba universe that wouldn't just opt in to get their money i feel like it's drew holiday he's like such a good guy and such a high character guy at the end of that if he doesn't feel like he can still play basketball He's one of the guys that I don't think would just opt in for the sake of opting in. I think he would probably be like, you know what? I've had a great career. I've made a lot of money. Um, my family's set for life. My or wife's a professional if he's, Or he pulls an Al Horford to a degree where, you know, if that year is worth 37.5, maybe you do something similar to what he just did now, but it's two years, 40 million instead. Right. You know what I mean? So he gets right. he gets a few extra, he gets a little bit extra, but gets two years out of the deal. So I think there will be options when the sell you can always enter. trade him man like he, he's gonna yeah. still have value um and it's a contract you know you we always talk about in the past with the celtics how we didn't have enough of those contracts to kind of aggregate together to make a a deal for for a bigger piece i don't know the contract implications with the new salary cap and aprons and all that stuff with aggregating salaries but um i do know that you can trade 37.5 in that last year or whatever it is pretty right. easily and you know there's probably going to be some some players out there that are going to be worth that money. Drew Holiday is always going to have value. Just he's the teammate of the year almost every year. He's mm-hmm. one of those guys that's a high character guy. So any franchise would want to bring on Drew Holiday. And he's always going to have value, especially as you see him now transitioning into this role with the Celtics where he's a knockdown shooter from the corners. Yeah. And, and that point about aggregating salaries is, is, is actually pretty important because Celtics, once we get into that second apron, which Maybe we can avoid it next year. It will be unavoidable the year after that. But once we get in there, the Celtics can't send out multiple salaries to get to one salary. They can't send out three salaries to get two salaries. But you can send out $35 million and take back a $15 million and $20 million guy. Exactly. So I think that's a really important piece of this, that it does give you flexibility. And what we've seen, and you know, this is part of, of Brad Stevens' plan, is that you know, as long as the Celtics are good, I, it really feels like he does not have any intention of really – relying on the draft i won't say that he's not going to build through the draft he'll still have the projects that he goes through and make sure you know i mean he's we, we will see what jordan walsh turns into but you know sam hauser as a guy that you kind of pick up off the hat the you know scrap heap or whatever you want to call it like develop guys we've seen him find luke Cornett, you know so he's going to find ways to build you know on the fringes but we're not going to see him feel like you know if say drew holiday does decline two three years from now to be like hey listen if i give you drew holiday and two first round picks but i can get two rotation guys that make sense around the jays who are still in their prime and we'll talk to eric white here in just a second i know our guy phil has a question in the chat that we'll get to like then you're gonna have the ability to do that and be able to to still break that up so I think you're right. I think the four years, like I think I was expecting a little bit more like three years, 30 mil each. But I think at the end of the day, like 
if you're going to pay the tax, like you're going to be paying. So if, if Wick and, and that group is willing to pay it, then by all means, kumbaya, let's keep this shit together. Like so far, it feels like this is the way, like this is the path, right? Like this is where it feels like it's all heading towards. And of course, we'll see what happens this postseason. But when you look at this team having security, stability, and a foundation, you know next year and really the next two years – you have everybody that you really like that whole starting five other than drew holiday beyond next season right now is guaranteed to be back. Peyton Pritchard's guaranteed to be back. And then you got to start looking to, you know, the Sam Hausers and well, Derek white. Most importantly, Al's getting older. We'll see where he's at Tillman, so on and so forth. But to have four members out of your five starting lineup guaranteed for the next two years that you're right now winning at, you know, an all time incredible pace with the net rating and, many other stats that that you can find like that's a nice security to have for your team that nobody's going to be looking over their shoulder about when am I going to get mine? When's my payday coming? And it allows them to be fully bought in to that, to that team mission that they've all talked about throughout the season. That was some uh, Stephen A. Smith level uh, breath control there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> there were a couple of times I wanted to jump in, but you were just on, you were just on a roll. Um, I, I want to go back three minutes when you were talking about when we were talking about like the Celtics um, ability to bring in people through the draft. Right. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Sam Hauser. Um, we just signed Kata, which, which yep. obviously wasn't through the draft, but it's a young guy that, you know, we're, we're investing in throughout this season. I think it's a team option for next year. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Team option for next year. And then you got Jordan Walsh who's playing, you know, the, the main Celtics are one game away from winning the G league title right now. And yeah, by all Celtics. accounts, I haven't I haven't tuned into enough main Celtics. I'm hoping that tomorrow night I can watch that uh that championship game. Jordan Walsh apparently looks great. You know, he apparently looks great. He's a young kid. There's the box a lot of say he looks great, at least at the very least. That's what I've seen. Well, and I'm seeing all over Twitter people talking about how great Jordan Walsh looks all all season, right? I I, I purposefully haven't tuned in to the G League to the main Celtics because I want to just wait until he's in Boston. But I, I think I'm gonna tune in tomorrow night just to kind of watch with my own two eyes. Cause I, I want to see it, man. I want to see the mm -hmm. kid play. He's young. He's raw. He's got a, he's got great measurables. The three point shot, the numbers at the three point shot look great. You know, he's a, he's an active defender. You know me. I think that he reminds me of um, a less athletic Andre Iguodala, just like his overall skill set and everything. So he's someone that as we look to the future and maybe we have to move off of a Drew Holiday, maybe we have to move off of a Derek White. God forbid we have to move off of a Jalen Brown. Like they're going to be, other young guys that are coming up through the pipeline in the G league is one of the best G league teams in the year that were uh, of the, um, you know, one of the best G league teams in the entire league. Yeah. And we can bring in some guys like DJ Stewart's playing great. Um, Drew Peterson is a potential Sam Hauser replacement. Should Sam get a bag from somebody as he should try to get. So there's all this stuff still in the pipeline, but the fact that we are locking in the core and drew holiday being such a valuable piece to everything that the Celtics have been trying to do to unlock the, you know, the, the hidden ingredients to win banner 18. Yeah. I think it makes a hell of a lot of sense. You're going to have to pay. He was going to be highly coveted on the free agent market. You didn't want to see him end up in Philly. They had a, they had a max slot this summer. So I, think, I think this is a really good move by the Celtics to lock in drew holiday. Great analysis, Greg, good move to, to sign good <laughs> players. It's uh yeah, this is, this is some hard hitting analysis that we have right here. Drew holiday is good and we're happy to have him back. Uh, let's get to a question that we got here from Phil in the chat here. Shout out to you, my guy. Cool, hey genuine. guys. Hey guys, hopefully C's can sign D white, but that may be tough with the drew signing. And that is true. That is kind of like the one factor that, and that was actually like Greg talked about, we were, we were shooting around for our game, our men's league game. It was supposed to happen that that didn't happen because of the power outage. And that was the first thing that the, our, our boy Remy who broke the news to us said, but now we're not going to sign Derek white. And you know, my, my first thought is, is that, listen, like I, I think this ownership group thus far up up and before this year or before maybe this off season, I guess they had always said if the team was right, that they would go ahead and they would pay the luxury tax. If it was the right time, if it was the right time, the right team, they're backing that up right now with everything that they've done thus far. So, you know, I, I think when it comes to Derek white, so he's extension eligible, he's still, he's still got another year on his contract for next season. So next year, no worries. Derek white is back as a Celtic. Then it really becomes, 
what does that average annual salary look like? And I know that there's a limit to what the Celtics can pay him on an extension right now. And the question is really, has he played himself above that extension? And that's when this could get a little bit dicey. But at the end of the day, if the Celt- if, if Wick and them are willing to pay it, like I don't see Derek White getting away from the Celtics. He's too valuable. And despite what that's going to mean financially, now think about it the year after Derek White isn't you know under contract anymore. Al Horford's going to be coming off the books. Uh, I mean, I think part of you, Greg, you mentioned with with Kada, it's a team option for next year. I think part of that is you know we'll see what happens with Luke Cornett and Xavier Tillman, who are both unrestricted free agents. I would imagine not both of them are back, and part of the reason Kada got a two year deal with the team option is so that they have somebody ready to go in that slot, and they'll probably have to determine between Luke and Tillman, and that will probably be a big factor as to who plays better this postseason, who's the better fit for, you know, maybe a, you know, four year, 12, I don't know what it's going to be four year, $15 million deal, something along, along those lines. I, I have no idea if those numbers will be what it is, but ultimately I I'm still under the impression that I think Derek white is far too valuable to get away. I don't know how they're going to make it happen, but I would still fully expect that. I don't know if he gets an extension this season, if it becomes something where they, play it out a little bit but i'm i'm having a really hard time picturing this celtics front office watching how valuable Derek white is and letting him get away yeah and i think with you know drew holiday being locked up through now it's 27 28 um jason tatum obviously is going to sign his extension jalen brown's locked yep. up chris Haps porzingis signed his extension so we have a window I think the window is through the end of next season with, with yeah. Derek White, right? Um, and just like Drew Holiday, there are going to be plenty of teams around the NBA that are going to be salivating for Derek White, right? Whether it's in the if he becomes an unrestricted free agent, if we can't get an extension done, or if we sign him to an extension and whenever he becomes trade eligible, other teams are going to want Derek White on their team, just like other teams are going to want Chris Tapps Porzingis. Other teams are going to want Jalen Brown. Other teams are going to want Chris Tapps. You know, like all, all, all that thing I just said, Chris Tapps. I think the key is that we aren't signing shitty players to bad contracts. We're signing great players to market value contracts. And because of that, we're always going to be able to move off of that unless there's a catastrophic injury where that player doesn't right. it doesn't look like who they are. The only person that kind of fits that mold is Chris Tapps, but his his extension doesn't scare me, man. He's he's making no. what 30, 30 a year. Um for yeah, three he'll years. Be, was, so he's yeah, he's 36 this year, 29 next year, 30 the year after, basically 60 for the next two years after after the season. So he's signed through 25, 26. Exactly. So with right now. His only the last year of his deal lines up with the free agency of Derek White. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the the Celtics aren't putting themselves in a in a bad situation, even tax wise, because they're going to be able to move off some of these guys because of the value that they still they all still have. Derek White is 29 years old. Drew Holiday, I think, is either 33 or 34. Chris Stapps is still on. Chris Stapps is like 28, right? Uh, let me look that up. I'm not positive. I think that is, I think I think he's about 28, 29, but yeah. Yeah. And the, you know, the Jays are still in their mid twenties right now. Tatum just turned 25. Yeah, Chris Epps, 20, 28 years old. He'll be uh 29 years old this summer. Right. And you, you don't know what seven, four is going to age like, but right. we do know that he looks the healthiest he's ever looked. He, there's the talent around him where he can play 55 games, no problem. And you know, this, he doesn't have to push his body to the limit in the regular season. And he can actually be saved for the postseason. The Celtics are not going to put Chris Stapps Porzingis in harm's way in the regular season. They're just not going to do it. So they're going to have a plan with all of these guys to make sure that even when people are sitting out, you know, they still have the talent to win 62, 63, 64 games in a season mm-hmm. because the, the talent on the team is just every other fan base just looks at the Celtics and they're just jealous of what we have, right? We have yeah. size, we have athleticism, we have shooting, we have defense, we have two-way players. Not many other teams have guys that can do things on both sides of the ball and are in their prime. We are set up for absolute success over the next, you know, two to three years before Wemby takes over the league. Yeah, I mean, looking at it right now, to me, it really feels like that 25-26 season, if they get an extension done 
with Derek White, you're still in the last year of Tatum making $37 million before he's going to jump to above and beyond where Jalen Brown's at with, you know, estimated to be about $57 million. Um, the follow that $53 million the same year that I'm talking about. Jalen Brown's worth million. the money. <laughs> yeah. And my, my point is, I think, so I think once Tatum, that 37 is going to basically double the 70, that's mm -hmm. when you're going to see probably either Chris Stapps or Derek or Drew. There's going to have to be some, some movement financially, but I think there, I think Derek White's going to get some type of deal done because they're going to try and leverage that year that you have Tatum left at that 37 million to, I mean, I think they're going to hopefully try to get Derek White for maybe 25 million, maybe somewhere <laughs> in that luck. range. I know it's because it, the thing is, if he gets the unrestricted free agency, someone's going to overpay. Someone's going to overpay and take Derek White. Because there's a limit, right? With the but... extension, you you can only go to like a certain percentage. That's above. that's why it might get to unrestricted free agency, and yeah. that's where it gets a little bit scary. So we'll see. Derek White's going to it's going to be a little bit of wait and see because he's earning himself the right to you know put his name out there and see who the highest bidder is, and so that that could be a scare. It's an area that's all, it's out of their control though, right? Like that's totally out of their control for what may happen with Derek White. So I think with Holiday, they had a little bit more control because of the option that was looming for next year where they can provide security and he was going to get a similar deal. There was no one that's going to blow the bank open. I even saw, uh, let me find this real quick here. I think this is from Woj and Bobby Marks had this as well. It might be missing one guy, but Holiday will become the fourth player to sign a fully guaranteed deal worth more than $100 million at age 33 or older. There might be a fourth guy in here, but can you guess those three? Say that one more time. Holiday will become the fourth player to sign a fully guaranteed deal worth more than $100 million at age 33 or older. Can you name the other three, potentially four guys, but I think it's, let's go with three right now to see if you can name them. They're current players? Yeah, current players. Oh man. Um, well, LeBron was doing the two for like the sign one and one deal. So I don't know that LeBron would be on that uh, list. Uh, LeBron's on that list. He did it with the okay. Lakers because the Lakers, okay. he signed the longer deal. Yeah. Okay. So LeBron, um, KD. Nope. No. And this is an extension. Uh, just a fully, fully guaranteed deal worth more than a hundred million at thir age 33 or older. So I think Katie might've been a little bit younger was the, would, the, would have been the issue on that one. Oh man. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm not going to come up with names. LeBron. So, is the only one now. so we got LeBron, we got Steph Curry. Okay. Our guy, Al Horford. All right. It, and then put, I think Draymond was four years for a hundred million, but it might've been like technically just on the line. I was, Bobby Marks had a, uh, had Draymond in his Woj didn't. So I don't know if Draymond actually counts or not. I was going to guess Steph, but like, if there's one thing I'm really not attuned to it's contracts, like yeah. anything that has to do with math, I'm normally out on and like contracts just end up getting into like too much math. Um, but yeah, I was going to guess Steph, but I couldn't remember when he signed his deal. If it yeah. was like three, you know, three years ago or, you know, cause he's what 35 now. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's it, it's it's a, it's very humbling that all these guys are in our age bracket right now, and uh, like this is like dude. like that like that question was geared around. Hey, do you know who the oldest motherfuckers are to sign hundred million dollar deals? And it's all dudes that are in the thirty three to thirty six year age range, which is exactly where we fall. Yeah, when um when I got home, Danielle, my fiance, was sitting there with me eating some frosted flakes together, as uh you do when your very fiance is couple. pregnant, <laughs> and um. I just asked Siri, I said, what's 135 divided by four? And Danielle looked at me because she didn't know I was talking to Siri. And she's like, why are you asking me that? And then Siri goes, 33.5. And she goes, are, is that million? <laughs> Danielle <laughs> says, is that million? I'm like, yeah, we're talking about millions. I was looking at Drew Holiday's extension. She's like, Jesus Christ, I can't believe people make that much money. Because she doesn't know anything about like sports right. contracts or anything like that. She's like, he's making $135 million over four years. And I was like, it's all, you know, we can't be comparing what we make <laughs> in our line of work to what they make. There are people that look at us and say, hey, we, we want to make as much money as them. So if you, just, you can't get envy yeah. when you look at NBA player contracts. You can't, you, you can't get green with envy. You can't get you can't get envious of the green. That's right. There you hey, go. Um, I, I, before we uh, wrap up here, I wanted to talk yeah. to you about a couple other things. Are, are we going to do a live stream tomorrow? Because we're doing a live stream right now. And we're, I feel like we're talking about all the things we're going to talk about tomorrow. So I want to save some meat 
for you know for tomorrow's live we'll, stream we'll meet because we'll, we'll we'll hit on we'll hopefully we'll know what the injury report is by then so we'll talk a little bit about okay. celtic strategy of resting players and and honestly we'll probably spend a lot of time on the live stream tomorrow just dissecting wherever the east is at i haven't checked on any scores tonight but Giannis's the east is injury. just constantly shifting Giannis's injury so right. we'll, we'll have some stuff to to chat about tomorrow so um yeah that's a great that's a great reminder for those of you listening here tune in today likely by the time you're listening to this thursday 5 p.m eastern 4 p.m central uh we'll be hitting you with a live stream ahead of celtics knicks we'll take a look at the standings take a look at any other injuries that have come up obviously talk about the Giannis uh injury from the other night with that calf strain he's already been ruled out for the final three games of the regular season the next time we're going to see Giannis will be Maybe in the 2-7 matchup, maybe in the 3-6 matchup, maybe in the 4-5 matchup. I don't know. The East is wild. I don't know what's going to happen. So we'll check in with that. But make sure you guys come join us. Bring some questions. Uh, exciting times, man. Extension for Drew Holiday. Playoffs around the corner. It is a fun time to be a Boston Celtic fan. That's going to do it for this emergency podcast of Green with Envy. I'm your boy, Will Weir. That's Greg Menakis. We're going to hit you with a little Black Sheep Optimist. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Till I hit the floor Every time I get this high It's you I find It don't take much no more Until I'm at your door to my core, baby. What can I say? You got me on the floor. You know I came to play. I know I shouldn't, but you seem to take my pain away. And every time I score, Jason Tatum fade away. I close my eyes.